All right, everybody, this is Sheets. And again, um, I'm going to be doing my own uh, slate breakdown for today's slate. The timing with me and Bobby didn't work out this morning such that the game by game he did on his own. And so I got some good feedback on uh, the slate kind of overview style, which is the way I like to do it on my own. Um, and so I'm gonna just give you kind of a different look at the slate, I guess. And I haven't really spoken with Bobby yet about the board. So uh, if I'm you know, contradicting him or whatever it is, that's, that's fine too. You know, this is just, again, my, my own overview of the slate. Um, so what you're looking at is, um, you know, is, is the sheet sheets, which again, for premium members, you can kind of access to on a regular basis. But I just wanna kind of show you how I go about interpreting them and kind of building slate overview of this slate. And then what we're gonna do is also do a test build uh, using SaberSim to, you know, create a bunch of lineups and see kind of what it looks like. So when, when, you're, when you're looking at this overview of DraftKings, First thing you'll notice is that usually when you rank these players by what I call sheets value score, usually you'll have the pitchers kind of like dominating the top of the value score, such to the point where you almost never have to sort by pitchers to, you know, highlight the pitchers. Usually of the top, you know, 10 values, you know, nine of them are pitchers. But in today's slate, it's not the case, which, which, which would lead you to conclude, and quite correctly, that pitching overall is very weak today, um, you know, and, and there's no real, not no real, but there's no real high quality standout ace on the slate that people are going to need to get to. But again, it's somewhat relative. So you have to see if anybody really stands out. And, and what I look at here is I see Otani as rating significantly higher than anybody else, right, by a, by a factor of eight. And then underneath that, I'm kind of bunching between Marquez, Minor, Pineda, and Luis Garcia with respect to these values. So what I'm looking at here is first that, you know, Otani is going to be clearly uh, the SP1. And, and the ownership kind of reflects that, except for the fact that you'll have about season. You see to have seen to have about 30% ownership in Luis Garcia as well, who does not rate, at least for me to be anything particularly special. Um, then you'll have Herman Marquis who, you know, rates okay, but at 20%, uh, I don't see him as, as much better than Mike minor, for example, at maybe half the ownership, Michael Pineda he's somewhat cheap, but again, you know, rating him by, by value scores, he's very similar so for example, minor and like twice the ownership, you know? So if I had to just without anything else, go ahead and just identify, you know, guys in a hand-built lineup that was gonna also factor in some kind of ownership considerations, it would be Otani, but also it would be probably minor. That would be kind of like my top two. Um, now, you already see that you're going to have like some good kind of one-offs here, but let's take a look at the stacks and see how they rank, you know, kind of from an overall perspective to get an idea of what's going on here. So what I'm doing right now is rating them by, you know, by column H and which I mean, if you've seen me do these reviews before, you know, rating them by column H by modified stack for me, um, that's something I always do. And depending on how much I'm going to pay for pitching, it then will determine whether I want to also rank them by value and by raw points. So if you if you rate them by by modified stack first, two teams two two you know two teams really stand out. Um, I shouldn't say stand out. Two teams are our best, and that would be Minnesota and Boston. Okay, then you'll see a little break down to these two, which would be Detroit and Houston, and then basically everybody else from a value perspective is even, is almost unplayable. Okay. Not, no, I should say playable. Um, they're definitely a tier below. So you're going to have Minnesota and Boston and then underneath that Detroit and Houston, and then the drop down to the others. However, if you rate these by raw points, you're going to see a totally different story, right? You're going to see Toronto rating all the way at the top. 
followed by Boston. And then after that, you have kind of Minnesota in a tier in a second tier of its own. So what I'm concluding then, if I'm can building, you know, et cetera, is that yes, if I can get to Toronto, that would be ideal. But I did notice that Boston and Minnesota and to some degree Houston fit in both a raw stank ranking and a modified ranking. So these are the teams that I'm going to look at. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at ownership. And the first thing I will see is that of these three teams I mentioned, Houston, uh, Minnesota, and Boston, at least at first glance, Minnesota looks to be the lowest owned of all of them. So if it were me, if I had to identify a, uh, a stack that from a GPP perspective, I was going to really load up on, Minnesota would probably be my top one. And, um, you know, I can't build completely the lineup for you, but you can see that, you know, if you play Otani, you can play any of those other pitchers and get all these Minnesota guys in pretty easily and probably get some good size one-offs as well. Um, so let's do the one-offs and then we'll go and do the same thing with FanDuel and then we'll build some lineups. Let's go back to the projections table and you'll see good one-offs. Um, sometimes, usually, but not always, the good one-offs will be coming from the, the good stacks as well. And you'll see Badu, Duran, Larnich, Kepler, Vaughn, all really well-priced um, outfielders. Um, there's also the possibility that Leroy Garcia is back in which case he's going to show up. He's not showing up right now on my list, but he, he might or might well might later. Um, and then Kiki Hernandez, Tyron Aquin, Springer. Some pretty good one-offs here within these stacks as well. Let's take a look and see if there's any difference between the DK um, analysis and the FanDuel analysis. So when it comes to FanDuel, from a pitching perspective, it looks like it's fairly close between some of the lower price guys. So Mike Miner, again, that name ringing, uh, ringing a bell here at 7,600, actually rating for me to be the top value and, and, and at very low ownership. Um, then you're going to get, you know, Otani is, is you know, ranked kind of third. Um, and then Garcia, I mean, I'm not, I mean, at 30%, I'm probably not going to get so much of that. So the thing that's interesting though, is that on FanDuel, if you're going to play minor, you're going to be able to get in a lot of the hitting that we, um, that we discussed that was probably unavailable if you paid up for pitching. So for example, you go into the FanDuel stacks and as I mentioned, while yes, you could rank them by modified, um, Fandle, you could probably get away with ranking them by raw as well, because you're going to be likely able to get them in. So, for example, Toronto, while they do actually do show up nicely in value as well, here, when you rank these by raw points, Toronto is going to rank to be the number one option, and you're going to be able to get to them here. Now, you do see that there's going to be a significant amount of ownership there as well, so even here, I feel as though maybe something like Boston would be a better option than Minnesota, given they're very equal in projection, yet from an ownership perspective, it looks like Boston is going to be significantly lower owned. Not that they won't garner any ownership, of course, but um, you know, getting a little bit of leverage over Toronto by doing that. So basically the same teams for me, Boston, Minnesota, and Toronto, except that on FanDuel, you'll be able to get to those Toronto guys a little easier. Now, the, the other thing is, is that I wouldn't worry too much about the popularity of the Toronto guys if you're going to play low-owned pitchers. Like, if you want to pay all the way down for Pineda or, um, let's say, minor, then you can get away with, playing, with being a little chalky or hitting because you're going to be getting different with respect to the pitcher. Okay, so with that all said, this is, um, this is where, again, people get, I wasn't confused, but maybe frustrated with me, but do, am I actually going to play the guys that I like? The answer is, I don't know. Um, because just because these guys project well on a median basis doesn't mean that they're going to naturally show up as like really good upside 
you know, ownership fade, correlative type of players, which uh, stacks, which is why what I like to do is use Saber Sim or some of the optimizers to create the, the, the multi MME builds for me. Um, but let's just see how, um, how this kind of flies. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload, we're not going to use the Saber Sims projections. We're going to upload, we're going to use the uh, true DFS ones. And I actually have a little, again, sneaky way to get, to get it up in here myself, but, um, you know, you know, you can do it manually or maybe we'll figure out some upload for you. Um, so how many lineups are we going to build? So uh, Luis Garcia, we still have issues. Why do I have Luis Garcia at zero? I'm going to pause for just a second. Yeah, sorry. So what happened was, was that I had two Luis Garcias. Uh, so I put it in, uh, the, you, gotta, you gotta be careful with that. Uh, we can actually X this other Luis Garcia out. Um, okay, so let's uh, build these and let's build, you wanna build 150? Let's build 20. We'll use the Saber some sliders. So we're gonna probably get some decent correlation. Let's just see what it comes up with. And let's just see if, if, if Again, using my projections within the Saberson optimizer, does it actually come up with Minnesota? Does it actually come up with Toronto? Does it actually come up with Houston? Or does it just go ahead and jam in those two pitchers, the high-priced pitchers, even though maybe I didn't like Garcia, and then get me access to who? Who, who, who am I looking to think? I'm thinking that maybe Detroit might show up in bills like that. So let's take a look. All right, so on DraftKings, it looks as though it's going to want me to get 100% Otani. That makes sense. But mine are very strong and zero um, Luis Garcia, which I, which is I feel good about. As far as team stacks, wow, we're able to get to Toronto with uh, without a lot of stress um, because, I mean, you get minor and Otani, you know, neither of them over 10K, and these Toronto guys are so cheap, you can get all that stuff in. Um, so Toronto, Minnesota, Boston, all that's going to work. And what I'll do sometimes, I'll, I'll download these and I'll upload them to my thing or whatever. Let's take a look at um, the FanDuel and do the same thing. So we'll go into FanDuel and we will again upload the FanDuel data. Then we're gonna do the, the Luis Garcia fudge. And let's see. And once again, um, uh, we have to put the Luis Garcia projection in manually for some reason. Again, the, the Luis Garcia multiple spelling issue could end up being the death of me one of these days, but we have him at 30.6, so we could put him in manually. 30.6. And then we'll make sure that we get rid of the other Luis Garcia. <laughs> and we'll build here, same thing. 20 lineups. I bet you that we get almost all minor. It's going to be my guesstimate. I would say we get 50% minor, maybe 40%. Um, what's his name? Pineda or something like that. And I'm still going to predict that we get zero Garcia. But we will, we shall see about that. And again, because we can get to these Toronto guys, well, let's just see. I bet maybe, maybe Garcia on FanDuel is going to show up. Drum roll. Gotta learn how to build the suspense with lineup builds a little bit better. So as I suspected, almost all Pineda and Minor paying all the way down for the pitching. And yeah, it's true that um, Pineda has been worse since they started banning, you know, the Reese balls or whatever. 
but um, yet still very low ownership. So that's why these guys are showing up. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. So I guess the next thing I would do, I mean, just for fun is I'd upload these and I'll do a tech lot, a technology kind of review in a minute, but you could do is you could just upload those lineups if you want to, um, to DraftKings. So you have them at your disposal. You can do that, right? We're not sure exactly what I'm playing, uh, but that would be DK upload those lineups there. And then on FanDuel, and then we can enter whichever tournaments we want. And I guess I will, maybe I will do a technology review one of these days on how to use upload up. Oh, I don't have any money on here. I gotta, I gotta put money on here. I'm not gonna show you how to put money on there. Um, so you can't save lineups on FanDuel in advance, right? On FanDuel, you actually have to put them in. Um, so I wonder what happens. What if I try to put 20 lineups in, but I only have enough for 60, not for 34 lineups? Let's see. What do you, what do you guys think before I put it up? You think it'll, it'll put the 19 or the nine lineups in or whatever and not put in the others? Or do you think that it'll just not accept any of them? Well, let's find out. Upload. Upload. Here you got to actually upload the file to the entries. And then this is the file. Let's see what we got. So it's going to ask for a hundred dollars, which you don't have. Let's see what it does. Insufficient funds. So did it do any of them? Let's see. Nope. That's bad business. It should have asked. So I got to remember to put money on there that I could upload those lineups, but that's about all I have for today. Um, for the, uh, the slate preview. Uh, it's going to be looking like Otani and then probably something like Miner is my best SP2. Then there's going to be some Pineda on FanDuel, probably Miner and Pineda and the stacks that I uh, identified. Uh, and away we go. I will see you guys hopefully at six during the live stream.